Hi there. Let's now look at the uh, new topic, aggregate supply and growth. Uh, in this series of videos, we will be uh, learning about what determines growth rates in the short run and the long run, and also the fluctuations in, uh, in output in the short run and also in the long run. This entails the study of aggregate demand and aggregate supply, basically. So let's uh, define aggregate demand. It's the total level of spending or amount of spending in the economy on domestically produced goods and services. Now, uh, its components are C, I, G, X. Now, these are the uh, variables or concepts we introduced last week. So, aggregate demand is, is basically some of the spending on consumer goods by, cons uh, by households in the economy, plus the investment or the spending on capital goods by the firms plus the G spending by the government on the domestically produced goods, plus the experts, the produced goods that we export. So these are the goods and service, uh, so the, the components of aggregate demand. And notice that we don't take away N imports. In, in textbooks you might see uh, in, in this part here of this equation X minus C, uh, X minus N, sorry. Instead we have the subscripts D, D, D here. So these reflect that the the these basically tell us that imports have been filtered out basically. So uh, these are all three are spending on domestically produced goods. Okay. So what C C basically is the amount of uh, spending by the households on domestically produced goods. So if if you're buying goods like if you're shopping in Tesco, for example, a lot of things are produced in 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 the UK, so that's reflected here. Households buy cars, for example, or Vox, uh, um, what was the uh, Vauxhall, for example, that's a car produced in the UK. I don't know if it's uh, fully produced or all components are produced in the UK. Nevertheless, the final good is produced in the UK, so it's spending on the domestically good produced good is is or well, the car is reflected here id the investment is is the investment as, uh, spending by the firms in the in a country in the uk for example and all these capital goods that are produced by the uh, or reflects the spending on the capital goods produced by the UK, other uk firms so this could include the building of new tesco store for example that's also investment uh, by firms, uh, also purchase of new uh, tractors, new uh, by agriculture or farmers or construction companies purchase plant and equipment that's also machinery for example. They're all investment by private firms. Now GD reflects the spending by the government. Uh, so the UK government purchases goods and services, utilize the goods and services produced by the firms in the UK, domestic firms for example. Um, that's that, and plus the experts. These are the goods produced by uh, British firms for the purpose of uh, exporting foreign countries. Now, aggregate demand curve. If you draw this, uh, the values, uh, AD values, aggregate demand values, against a uh, level of output, or oh, sorry, uh, against a against uh, price levels, I should say, we will uh, derive an aggregate demand curve, which is generally uh, downward sloping curve. Like the demand curve of an individual firm, aggregate demand curve for the whole economy is basically a, a downward sloping curve as well. I will show you in the next slide what it is and what makes it downward sloping or what causes it to be downward sloping. Basically, this curve reflects the amount of output demanded or purchased at uh, each level of prices. Okay, um, here is the XY plane. On the Y axis, we have the price level. Now, remember, in the in the pr uh, firm level or industry level uh, curves or the graphs, we had in the Y axis the price, just the price of the good or service, because we will we are looking at one. Uh, price, uh, one service or one product at a time. Here we look at the economy, whole economy. So 
it involve, includes all the prices, average prices of all the goods. This is basically weighted average price. So this is also called GDP deflator, economy-wide price level. So if, if you're looking at only consumer prices, the one that we looked at last time in the class, it was CPI, consumer price index or retail price index, but here we're looking at the whole industry, whole economy, so this is GDP deflator here. In the x-axis, we're looking at the national output, which is a real GDP, GDP that's, uh, uh, that doesn't reflect the changes in the price levels here. Yeah, real GDP. So it's, it's basically the uh, uh, inflation-free GDP, I should say. It's the actual volume of output produced. So that's national output. Now, as I said, aggregate demand curve is downward sloping. This, as you can see, at higher prices, we uh, see the, uh, the level of output declines. Yeah, level of output or level of uh, demand for output, national output declines. Yeah, it goes back at the low price levels when the inflation is lower, or the prices generally are low, uh, then living standards. Are, I mean, uh, living standards improve obviously, but the actual prices decline. Then this, the, the output demand for output declines. Uh, sorry, increases as well. So this is the right fast movement. So just like in the firm and price um, industry level uh, demand curves, if you remember, prices uh, uh, induce movement along the curves, yeah? along the curve. There is no shift in aggregate demand curve if there is a movement. So change in price level, it's the, it's the movement along the curve that happens. Now we'll look at the shifts in a minute. Now why is it uh, Downward sloping. What are the causes? We know that the prices basically induce the co induce these movements. But then, uh, what sort of uh, what what lies behind these price changes? For example, yeah, why why is it that prices and uh, higher prices induce decline uh, reduced uh, demand for uh, national products? The first. Uh, uh, reason for this uh, downward sloping curve or the the negative relationship between price levels and then the uh, output is or demand is is the international substitution effect that's if you remember aggregate demand was was the uh, spending on total spending on domestically produced goods and services now if if the prices increase here as you can see if the prices rise what happens is that we tend to uh, substitute the uh, goods that are domestically with the goods that are imported. So domestically produced goods become more expensive in other words. So if the price level of domestically produced goods are higher, then what we usually do is we usually import or buy the import, cheaper import. And that's the case here. So that's as a result demand declines with the price for goods and services increasing. And this is what we're experiencing in the UK. If you look at the UK made goods, they are generally expensive. And if you look at the imported goods, they are generally cheaper. As a result, produ production in produced good goods in the UK or UK made goods are usually uh, in short uh, demand and also short supply as a result because there is little demand for UK made goods. Okay, so that's one uh, reason why we have the downward slope. And also, by the way, if the opposite is true too, so if, if the domestically made goods are cheaper, we have higher higher uh, level of output uh, demand for national output that's because uh, now imported goods become more expensive an example could be Fox, uh, Vauxhall again well in this case uh, it could be anything but we'll take the Vauxhall case with the consumption component increasing and decreasing so if if you're competing, if the if the if you're looking at the car market, it's very competitive. And if the German-made cars are more more cheaper or cheaper than the British-made ones, then obviously we'll tend to buy uh, cheaper versions. So we, there is an input substitution effect here, or international substitution effect. We call it. We buy German ones instead of British ones. But if the prices increase in in the UK, for example, if the prices decline in the UK, in other words, it becomes cheaper to make the goods in the UK. We tend to buy the UK good uh, made cars because components made in the UK and as a result, the car made in the UK become cheaper than the ones made in in Germany. So then they they. There is, a, there is this price level and national output and real GDP negative relationship. There's a second uh, 
reason for uh, this downward slope and that's intertemporal substitution effect for a given money supply for example uh, with the high prices what happens is that the, uh, the, the, the consumers or the economic agents it could include government uh, firms or uh, the consumers the, the agents usually uh, demand more uh, money so if the price increase, we need more money to purchase the goods and services produced in the, in, uh, domestically. Now this implies demand for credit basically increases or demand for uh, uh, the bank lending increases. As a result, interest rates increase. High interest rates imply basically, uh, uh, basically this in encourages more saving, reduction in, more in, in spending basically. So expensive credit, I, I call it credit, credit is basically the amount that you can borrow from a bank, from banks, the, the, the funds that you can borrow from banks. So if the credit becomes expensive as a result of high interest rates, we are not borrowing. So this can be clearly, um, maybe easily explained by a K, uh, example from, from a firm. For example, if, if, if you are a a, a firm manager at, at large firms assume that you want to make an investment you want to open a big store and you would like to well to, uh, to 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 start building the store or purchasing the store by borrowing from a bank usually that's what the companies do they usually don't have enough cash to make the investment so they go to banks and ask for investment but if interest rates are high as a result of high prices uh, in the in the economy, what happens is that you don't borrow; you decide to wait for the interest rates to go down. That implies you are not actually investing now this this year. Maybe next year you will. So this year's aggregate demand for uh, capital goods then declines. So high prices, price levels is basically inducing you uh, uh, to to reduce the demand for. Na uh, domestically produced goods as a result, capital goods, right? So that's the intertemporal substitution effect. Notice that temporal means basically over time, yeah? So you don't invest this year, maybe you did uh, delay your, uh, your decision to invest later as a, as a business manager. So time, uh, uh, time induced substitution effect in this case. Now it's interest rate induced substitution effect, but then there is this element of timing as well. There is also something called uh, real balance effect. This uh, directly relates to the savings that people have and it's the decline in the purchasing power of savings. So if the prices are increasing, what happens is that the, 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 the value of those savings or purchasing power of these savings decline. It's eroded basically. So we tend to save more, even more, because it's expensive now. We don't buy at the moment. So we tend to save more we tend to increase our balances in our bank account. So this is a real balance effect. As a result, the spending declines in, uh, as, the, as the price levels increase. Now, this is the, all three types of uh, effects uh, basically classified as substitution effect because we are substituting with one action with another one. So in this first case, we are substituting actual good, so domestically produced good with uh, the with, uh, Inputs. In this case, we we substituting. Um, in other words, we are deciding to invest next year instead of this year. For example, maybe we expect the increased interest rate to decline. Again, this is substitution. Effect. Here, we are substituting consumption with savings because our savings are being eroded. Now, there is also something called income effect. With the high prices, what happens is that the, if our wages do not increase, obviously we will end up spending less. Uh, you might have heard that people complaining about their wages not even covering their uh, wage increase, not even covering the inflation rate. And that's the case. If this happens to every single person in the economy, if the inflation increases or price levels increase and then wages do not increase enough, income doesn't increase enough, that implies we spend less over time, right? So in one year, that could happen that we, we end up spending less for a given price level, aggregate demand could be less than what it could be in the equilibrium, for example, yeah? So our income doesn't keep up with increases, you know, our income doesn't, do not keep up with the increase in the price levels. And, and that means we spend less or we 
plan to spend less. So this is all about plan spending here, aggregate demand. Okay, and next is now the aggregate supply. Uh, this is the main topic um, of today's uh, video, basically. Now, aggregate supply is the total amount of goods and services uh, produced and supplied in an economy. Now, it's about planet production or supply of the goods and services. So, aggregate demand is basically spending. Yeah, but while aggregate supply is about the production. Now, we usually analyze aggregate supply by looking at the curve, or again, XY uh, plane play, uh, comes into a picture here. Uh, aggregate supply curve is basically the, the relationship between prices and the national output, again. Now, unlike the aggregate demand curve, the, the supply curve is upward sloping here. It is, and it's not different from again our um, uh, uh, sorry, it's not different. This, the curve is not different. The concept is basically the whole concept is basically similar to what we learned in the firm level and and the the uh, industry level supply curves. If you remember, as the prices rise, as the prices rise, firms produce more because high prices imply high profits, and high profitability induces more production. So. As the high prices rise, the prices levels rise, in other words, in the whole economy, you could see that the uh, supply curve increases, or this amount of uh, supply of the goods and services will increase. This is in the short run. So this is a short run curve. In the short run, we expect the wages, which usually affect the supply and all the goods and uh, the, the, the cost of production usually is what we expect to be constant in the short run so when you're drawing the aggregate supply curve we assume that the wages are constant or do not change in the short run and also we also expect that the uh, technology doesn't change so in the short run we don't innovate much so we keep the innovation level fixed and also prices of inputs will remain fixed as well and if you remember these were three important uh, uh, factors that shift aggregate supply as well and sorry a uh, supply in the firm level and industry level as well so that applies here too but in this case we're looking at economy-wide uh, price changes and wage changes as well yeah okay we also expect that the level of available resources doesn't change in the short run and that makes sense in the short run we don't expect the companies to increase their capacities and then shifting the supply curve so this planned supply in the short run will remain uh, or will be represented by these shifts along the curve now it's at a point in time we're looking at within one year for example and the changes here do not involve time variation and uh, now that's the short run uh, supply curve, aggregate supply curve. In the long run, however, the long run aggregate supply curve would be uh, uh, inelastic. At any price level, we produce at the maximum level. For example, if this is the maximum GDP we have, we could have at real GDP, that would be the case. Um, price changes do not affect. What affects the, the long run average sub aggregate supply curve would be the uh, technology and production uh, um, production factors and the endowment of the factors yeah if there is technological shock in the long run we might innovate that moves or shifts our to the right or left depending on how the disasters for example that could also happen as well could also affect and determine our long run aggregate supply curve as well okay um, let's look at the equilibrium case um, what, what, at what level countries usually produce or what's the optimal level of output in, in the whole economy. Now, if you bring together aggregate supply and aggregate demand curve, you will see that the, uh, the equilibrium point is where they cross. However, let's assume that there is a uh, uh, price level is, is low in the economy at P2. At that level, you could see that the, the the firms are willing to supply at a point uh, B, in other words, this point here corresponds to some sort of a level of output, but there's a huge amount of demand here. There's a shortage, basically. Yeah? This shortage, so difference between aggregate demand and aggregate supply is a shortage here. What happens is that this shortage pushes up the prices. Yeah, uh, uh, Logically, if you think of it, if, if there is not enough bread, 
Tesco would definitely increase the prices to sell whatever they have it. And then over time, however, high prices induce greater amount of production. So that implies movements along supply curve as well. So more will be available as the prices rise because Tesco is rising, it seems breeze is rising it, seeing this. Uh, bread manufacturers or bread producers produce more so that will go up as a result as the prices are going up we tend to consume less so our demand curve demand uh, also declines with the high prices now notice that this is not about just bread it's about whole economy i just took the pri uh, bread as an example here so as any uh, uh, if the price level increases we tend to consume less while firms supply happily more until oops we reach the point oops we reach the point where the uh, we reach the equilibrium point where the prices um, and uh, sorry uh, the price reaches the equilibrium point where aggregate supply and aggregate demand equ equates basically they equal here at that this is, will be the output level here I, I failed to put the uh, indicate the quantity as well uh, but this is the equilibrium quantity that of the GDP now we also now need to look at the shifts in aggregate demand and aggregate supply. Um, let's start with the aggregate demand shifts. Remember, the only thing that doesn't change, oh sorry, the price changes only induces shifts or, or the movement along the curves. Yeah, in this case, prices in the short run change and these induce only movements along the curves in, in AS and AD. However, there are factors that move uh, shift the whole entire demand curve. For example, in this case, we see that the aggregate demand curve moved to AD1. That's this new equilibrium price and higher demand uh, for national output at a higher price now. Um, or in other words, that's the equilibrium point, but for a given equilibrium price level, then we demand more when there is a shift in aggregate demand. But what causes the shift? Well, the co cause of the shifts in aggregate demand are usually its components. If you remember, they are consumption or the demand for consumer goods produced in the, in, in, in domestically or UK in this case, investment goods, for example, demand for investment goods, spending on investment goods, also spending on government purchases, this public spending, and also changes in exports. Now these uh, shifts, real, uh, the, the components change as a result of, for example, uh, changes in interest rates. Lower interest rates imply borrowing, high borrowing implies high investment. Firms, for example, may start spending more on building new factories and things like this. People borrow and build, you know, buy houses, things like so. This, this increases the aggregate, term, shifts the aggregate demand curve. This also includes the government spending, for example, government, for example, is building at the moment now uh, high speed rail, for example, this is a, this is an a government spending on public goods and service improvement, building roads, for example, yeah, these in shift, uh, increase the government spending. Um, many, many, many other things, you know, you might expect higher incomes, for example, you might spend as a, as a whole, whole, whole economy might spend, households might spend a lot more than what uh, they may plan, for example, uh, to spend more than what they did in the last year, because this year we expect that Brexit is, is something that is more positive than negative, for example, yeah, so shift in aggregate demand, because after the Brexit we might expect that things may be better, yeah, we can spend now instead of holding on to our savings, yeah, so aggregate demand then shifts to the right as a result. For a given price level, then we demand more. However, we essentially uh, move towards equilibrium point, right? This to, to this point instead of moving, staying here, because this is in the with the shift in AD. Now we 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 have a new equilibrium point, so we move eventually to this level with the high prices. And remember, with a shift AD in AD, in other words, if there is a huge demand or greater demand than what's available, usually we we push up the prices so new equilibrium price would would move here I, I don't have that movement here i failed to do that again but i hope you understood this now 82 this is the shift downward yeah leftward shift in 82 this is the opposite of the 81 in this case we expect pessimism and all confidence will be lower firms tend to not spend as much uh, consumers don't consume as much as a result the whole economy-wide spending declines and what happens is that in, at this equilibrium price the quantity demanded will be lower 
However, because there is less spending, then average prices start declining. Yeah, you know, if you're not buying cars, what happens is that dealers will have to reduce the car prices, so they go down, house prices go down, uh, consumer goods prices go down, all the grocery prices go down, so slowly we move down to this price level, so the, the new price level here will be a little bit of higher than before, uh, than the equilibrium price level quantity, yeah? it will be a bit higher quantity demanded here so this would be our new equilibrium point okay that's the verb uh, the, the, how the aggregate demand shifts up and down now how about aggregate supply what causes the aggregate supply curves for example to and remember aggregate supply is the planned output in the whole economy firms supply the goods at every price along the curve here right um, now movement or shift to the right or outward shift for example in aggregate supply curve for a given price now we uh, firms are uh, happy to produce more and supply more domestically but obviously we again settle on the uh, equilibrium price but the question is what moves this shift what motivates this shift or induces this shift now there are a number of uh, reasons first is that wages maybe are lower than before so costs will be lower as a result there will be more and um, more production and greater amount of de demand as well and obviously if there is a huge supply shock in other words increasing supply prices also go down so price movements reflect this shift in ad here or ac in this case yeah this could be the unit costs of labor or wages declining and if you if, uh, remember that in in the uk about 70 percent of uh, costs of manufacturing and production is the wages it's a high wage economy unlike china for example where the economy wages are low as a result they can produce at low uh, prices but if you're looking at the uk and especially in aggregate supply of uh, domestically produced goods then the wages make a huge amount of costs huge fraction of costs that implies Reduction in costs basically implies basically a shift to the right of aggregate supply curve. This could also be the case when, when uh, uh, the commodity prices decline as well. The final goods will be cheaper again and greater amounts can be supplied. For example, oil prices, if they decline, the airline industry reduce, the, uh, reduce for example, their tickets prices. There will be a lot of activity in, in terms of flying abroad and taking holidays. Or the, or the prices of cars will also decline as a result because of the petroleum declining, yeah? Because high, low petroleum prices implies more car production, more demand for cars, so every supply shifts. There are various reasons. Exchange rates might, for example, decline as well. That affects as well. Imported goods, for example, might, uh, might uh, induce, induce the shift in aggregate supply as well. Now, also, look at this uh, second case. I, well, this is AS1, I failed to put it again, and this is AS2. AS1, uh, next is the uh, shift backwards or inwards shift in aggregate supply, contraction, we call it, in supply of goods. That's, that's leading to a rise in price, so higher equilibrium price now uh, with the lower output level. This uh, might simply arise from higher wages. Yeah, it, this is this is the case in the UK. Uh, a lot of high, uh, I mean, high wage economies imply, uh, experience closure of factories mm, or, or capital flights, for example. Yeah, investment declines. As a result, supply capacity declines of the economy. Yeah? Output capacity declines in the economy. Uh, we end up paying a bit higher prices for these. Uh, for the domestically produced goods and it's the, basically the, the factors that affect it or induce the outward shift basically induces the inward shift too another, another important aspect of this is uh, another important in, uh, inducement mechanism is the, uh, is the government's intervention through taxation for example if the government raises the corporate tax rate or many other tax rates the producers tend to produce less of these goods and if the tax rates increase in, in the economy this aggregate supply curve shifts backwards as a result of uh, loss of capacity loss of productive power and if you remember if you've been watching american 
politics and uh, the economic activities in America. The, the Trump administration reduced the tax rate hugely. That implied that firms promised them that they would produce in, in the U U.S. initially if they were planning to move out of the U.S. because corporate profits are higher. They said they will now use the uh, 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 untaxed part of income or the savings from low taxes now to invest more. That implies there's a shift, there will be a shift in aggregate supply, so more jobs, as Trump wants it. But it's also the case that if the taxes are higher, then the, the, the supply curves goes backwards. Just like this, the factors that affect the firm level and individual industry level supplies, supply curves shifts. The aggregate demand, uh, sorry, aggregate supply curves are also affected you know, by similar factors, but on an economy level. So taxation in the overall economy, whole taxation of the economy might uh, increase in taxation might induce a shift to to the left here in the aggregate supply curve. So this is basically the how the equilibrium uh, level of Aggregate supply and demand is, or equilibrium level of output is determined with with the shifts uh, in in each of these curves. Now, in the next video, we will now go into details of with examples of uh, out, output changes in in real economy using real real case study.